Hello and welcome to Insight, I'm Antoine Lin Lee. With revenue exceeding more than $1.9 billion, Ethiopian Airlines is one of the most profitable airlines in Africa. Stay with us for an inside look at the history and success story of Africa's fastest growing airline. Insight is brought to you by our proud partners, Coca-Cola, Open Happiness, St. George Beer, the first Ethiopian beer since 1922. In today's troubled airline industry, many major airlines hit turbulence with bankruptcy, merges, even going out of business. But when an airline surpasses the storm, elevated with history, it's a remarkable an amazing story. We're going to grow the airline to a $10 billion company. This is, I think, a compelling story that we, not just as Ethiopians, by the way, as Africans, we can tell. It's the fastest growing airline in Africa. With over $1.9 billion in revenue, Ethiopian Airlines is Ethiopia's pride and success story. For centuries, before aviation, packed animals were used for means of transportation in Ethiopia. Later came the train. It was in 1929, on August 18th, when the first airplane arrived in Ethiopia. The pilot was a Frenchman named André Maillet. The landing of the aircraft was an historic event. This was the first time that the plane was arriving. And at the beginning, they, didn't, they were not quite sure whether it was a plane or a, or a or some kind of uh, bird, because it was so small at the beginning. But um, when it arrived, there was quite a lot of excitement. And when the, play, the, the pilot came out of the airplane in particular, uh, he was like a hero. The new aircraft brought excitement, but it came at a time of power struggle. It was actually used for military purposes, uh, because uh, the emperor, who the person who became emperor at that time, Emperor Alessandro was not yet emperor. and he was uh, struggling against one feudal lord uh, after another. And the last final confrontation was, was with Rasguksa of Bergemden of Northern Ethiopia, who, was, who happened to be also the husband of Empress Zodito. So this was a major confrontation that took place in March 1930. And uh, the emperors, or at that time the regent, he was still the regent, he was able to mobilize the, the spotted aircraft that had already arrived for military purposes, first by throwing, by uh, scattering leaflets, by dropping leaflets, uh, demoralizing the enemy troops, and then eventually also a few bombs. So in a way it's really interesting that I don't think it, uh, it has happened in any other country that in one year's time uh, after it ar its arrival, the airplane was used for military purposes. So it was a very decisive battle. Of course, it was not only the airplane that uh, determined the day, but it had a very important uh, psychological impact, I think, on the outcome of the, of the battle, which eventually, of course, proved to be the final one. Because three days later, the Empress died, and uh, 
Rastafari Mokun, the regent, as he was known at that time, became Emperor Haile Selassie the first of Ethiopia. Quite a few of the famous pilots, you know, people like Aspa, Ali, Barukaba, Mishka Babichev, and so on, these were the first pilots who were trained before the war, before the, 1930, before the Italian invasion in 1935. After the Italian occupation, uh, I think it, it happened in, in connection with the, the diplomatic moves that Ethiopia was ma making uh, in, the, in the course of the establishment of the United Nations. The Ethiopian delegation was sent to the United States. And uh, apparently, I think the emperor, the, on the emperor's instruction, uh, they started talking to the to the Americans about their interest, Ethiopia's interest in developing its own airline. Uh, one thing led to another, and eventually, of course, the Americans were ready to help, and uh, they arranged an agreement between Ethiopian Airlines and the trans uh, transcontinental world airline at that time, which was called TWA, which eventually became Trans World Airlines. So uh, uh, an agreement was uh, concluded in 1945 to um, start an Ethiopian airline uh, with the support and technical, uh, uh, the technical and managerial support of Transworld Airlines. The Air Force was established about the same time, and since they had already a crop of young Ethiopian uh, pilots, it was almost automatic that they would uh, probably they'd be used to, for, to, to open an Ethiopian uh, team within the Ethiopian Airlines. So there were four of them came, and in fact the one who, came, who became eventually most famous was Captain Alamayo, because he eventually was checked out as the first Ethiopian captain in 19, I think, 57 or 59, yeah. So there are four of them, actually not all of them survived, but Captain Alamayo, of course, uh, eventually uh, uh, became the most, one of the most successful Ethiopian pilots. The first black, actually, jet captain as well. I think the Americans, although they helped set up the airline, were not prepared to relinquish the, the top positions. Ethiopianization at both the pilot level and the management level was really hard for the uh, struggle. Uh, even Captain Alamayo has, he has recited it in his, uh, in his memoirs, you know, what a hard time he had being checked out as a captain, you know, to be able to sit on the, on the left seat. So, so it was not easy uh, because the Americans felt that they have to be in control, the Europeans, the Europeans were not ready. The same with management, the same with technical personnel, but of course, uh, I mean, there was a gradual, relentless struggle to Ethiopianize, and by 1972, we have, well, uh, Ethiopian Airlines managed to have its first Ethiopian uh, general manager, as it was called at that time. It was the mid-70s, and the Dirk regime came into power. Ethiopia found itself thrust in civil war. It was a brutal time period, also known as Red Terror. In the Dirk period, the main challenge was the fact that uh, quite a number of the aircraft were used for military purposes, and this had, this had a negative impact on the, on the aviation. And secondly, I think the decline in tourism was also another, another major, major challenge. So there was the passenger traffic uh, dwindled especially in the, in the mid-70s and late 70s, because the country was uh, caught in this uh, turmoil, revolutionary turmoil, red terror, and, those, and that, that kind of thing. 
But one thing that you can say is that all regimes, all three regimes, in fact, up to the present time, eventually they always appreciated the value of Ethiopian Airlines because, because it's a prestige thing, it's a flag carrier, and secondly, it's, it's, it, it yields revenue. It's, it's a very profitable enterprise. So uh, even during the dark period at the beginning, they tried to interfere and so on, but eventually they realized that uh, it is better kept alone. We were first hired to be their advisors in 2004. If I'm not mistaken, they had 11 aircraft and somewhere around 350, definitely less than $400 million in revenue. Now, it, was, it had a solid reputation, no question about it. It's been around for 50 some years at that time. Uh, it's been through a lot, uh, but it managed to survive. But the reality was, it was a small airline. When we did focus groups of the employees of Ethiopian Airlines, we brought them to our offices here, we did breakout sessions at the, at the, at the headquarters of the airline. What we found was there was actually a very committed workforce, absolutely committed. The employees of Ethiopian Airlines feel that they own the airline, and it is their airline. I had never seen such level of commitment by the workforce like the one we saw at Ethiopian Airlines. So our first reaction as an advisory team was, you know what, we got something to work on here. We actually can build on this enthusiasm and commitment. mandate I remember we were given when I first met uh, the then uh, chairman of the board who was the foreign minister of Ethiopia at that time was listen we as a shareholder what we want out of this study out of this transformation is not incremental growth but transformational we know this airline can do better we know this airline can grow just work with us and get us there so we could see on both key stakeholders, employees and the shareholder, were aligned. But there were also quite a lot of skepticism within and outside of the airline. And there were people coming up to me and said, Zemanene, what are you talking about? This airline has been around for 50 some years, this is all it could achieve. You're telling us we can get to a billion in five years? I think you're going to bankrupt this airline. I'm sorry. I know you came from the States that we have all kinds of optimism all the time, maybe ingrained in them, but this is Africa. This is Ethiopia. I, I, I don't think, I think you need to be cautious because you're going to bankrupt this airline. And one guy actually came up to them, listen, I'm nearing retirement. I want to be able to continue to collect my, my pension. And he meant it genuinely. I mean, he didn't mean it in a bad way, but he, just, he was genuinely concerned. But the vast majority of the employees, and certainly the shareholder and the management said, you know what, we can do it. And here's what happened. In five years, not only did they get to the billion, but they actually exceeded that. They got to $1.2 billion in five years. It is the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, the most advanced aircraft in the world. Outside of Japan, Ethiopian Airlines was the first in the world to take delivery, Africa's first. For me personally, it was the happiest day in my life. And uh, I'm sure also it must have been the happiest day for every Ethiopian, whether uh, residing here in Ethiopia or 
in any part of the world. And also the happiest day for the continent. You know, in the mainstream media in the West, as you know, it has been the practice that whatever is talked about Africa or Ethiopia is always for the bad things, war, deprivation, famine, and uh, poverty. And you know, uh, the, 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 the average person in the West believes that whatever is done in Africa is always a failure. Uh, but here is an airline, you know, doing the unthinkable and growing very fast and leading technology, innovation technology in the world. Uh, that, ha that has changed the image of the country and the image of the continent. This is, I think, a compelling story that we, not just as Ethiopians, by the way, as Africans, we can tell that when we put our hearts and minds together, when we're focused, I think the capacity is there, both the human capital and the financial capital, to be able to run the most sophisticated aircraft in the world, the 787 Dreamliner, even before the US carriers can do it. The moment that the Dreamliner touched down in Addis Ababa, what was it like? We brought the, Dream, uh, the Dreamliner on August 17 uh, to Addis, and guess what? On August 18, the airplane is flying commercial flight. This is again a record. The two Japanese carriers have taken uh, uh, the 787 before us, and many airlines have taken uh, delivery of the 787 after us. But in all cases, they have taken a month or two to acquaint themselves, to train their people, and to know about the airplane uh, before they fly commercial uh, flight. But unique for us, the next day it was flying uh, a commercial flight. With multi awards, acquisitions, and modern new fleets, Ethiopian Airlines positioned itself in becoming the leading aviation group in Africa through its Vision 2025. By Vision 2025, the targets are we're going to grow the airline to a $10 billion company with seven business units and 18 million passengers per annum, uh, 820,000 tons of cargo per annum, 17,000 employees uh, flying to 90 destinations international, and uh, cargo is also to grow. And uh, there is also business transformation. So thus far, we have been an airline, mainly an airline. Operating in the forefront of technology, Ethiopian Aviation Academy is Ethiopian Airlines' prestigious and valuable institution in Africa. For over 50 years, Ethiopian Airlines has continued to invest on personal training and development. The Academy not only serves the needs of the airline, but thousands of overseas trainees from around the world have attended training here. What's also unique for Ethiopian Airlines is the growing number of female technicians. ዳንዲዝ <laughs> When I was a kid, uh, my childhood dream was, uh, I had two dreams, one was to be a uh, pilot and the other one was to be a businessman 
It's just uh, destiny and uh, blessing I end up to be a pilot. My father, he always wanted me to be a pilot. And the way uh, I used to have, uh, I was dreaming to see different places to fly to and uh, meet different people and work for my country too. And that was my inspiration to be pilot. My life changed so much. It makes me like uh, a very responsible guy. And I have a beautiful life, beautiful wife, beautiful kids, and a very happy person. Ethiopian Airlines is a pride not only for Ethiopians, for all Africans. I see Ethiopian Airlines every time growing, getting bigger, and uh, I have the uh, greatest feelings for Ethiopian Airlines and a great pride for Ethiopian Airlines. Just to Washington? More than providing flight service, attentive customer service has been an asset to the airline's success. What we call an asset, which makes Ethiopian Airlines unique, is the legendary hospitality of the Ethiopian, us Ethiopians, and to be specific, the cabin crew. Okay, the warm welcome, the service is what makes Ethiopian Airlines unique and our traditional dress, of course, which uh, is really appreciated by most passengers because one of our crew will always wear the traditional dress. And of course, our uh, traditional food, which is part of the menu for Cloud9 services. And to add into that, there is also our coffee ceremony, which is presented with our coffee pot and our, our cups. So I believe that makes Ethiopian Airlines, and of course, the presentation of that service makes it open airlines unique. Serving 70 international destinations, Ethiopian Airlines has come a long way since their first international flight to Cairo back in 1946. The airline also serves 17 domestic destinations. I decided to visit two. First stop was Mekele, located in the Tigray regional state in the northern part of Ethiopia. Interest from historic attractions, local markets, to the sweet taste of pure white honey, Right off Lake Tana is the beautiful city Bahardar. It is a city filled with rich culture and various attractions. It is also one of the leading destinations here in Ethiopia. Today you can ask, you can go to any African country and ask about Ethiopian Airlines. I bet that many people will say it is their national carrier. This concludes our program. I'm Antoine Lindley, and from all of us from Insight, Thanks for watching.